HSV GTO for the bogan who doesn't have any friends. <laughs> Now quickly, this video has been sponsored by Car Vertical. Trusted by over a million people in over 50 different countries, Car Vertical uses its various databases to check used cars for accidents, theft, outstanding finance, mileage rollbacks, and so much more. For example, here we have a Volkswagen Golf and Car Vertical has already alerted us to a potential issue with the mileage and potential damage. If we keep scrolling, we can see that the Golf was originally from the UK and was imported into Australia back in 2019. The mileage does not add up, and wow, look at the damaged photos. This really shows you the history of this car. Car Vertical is a vital tool for anyone looking to buy a used car. A link is in the description, and I'll even pin a comment down below. So make sure you check them out, and let's get back into the video. G'day, everybody, <laughs> and welcome back to another Rosh Reviews, where today we are in a Z Series HSV. GTO and this is the coupe this is the unusual one surprisingly here in Australia and this car man it is a cult classic just have a look at the sweet design especially that back quarter end man I absolutely love this thing and when you get around some of these tight hairpins here you know this is a big car weighs about 1.6 tons still even though this is a coupe Get on to her. <laughs> Even though we are running the old Holden slush box, the four speed here, mate, that six liter makes up for it big time because man, that is a sweet LS2 motor. Now we do have to say a huge thank you first to Westside Autos for loaning me out this particular GTO. It is for sale, guys. If you are interested, go and have a look because there is a link in the description and they just got in an even nicer example, which I am kicking myself a little bit because that one is manual and it does have red leather. So we got the slush box today, but we ain't gonna complain because my goodness, the noise. <laughs> Now out of the bonnet, let's quickly cover it because this has got the naturally aspirated six liter LS2 V8. And boy, this is the same engine that is in my favorite HSV of all time, the VZ Club Sport. And this engine is just a powerhouse. It really is 297 kilowatts, 530 newton meters from factory, all to the rear wheels in the four speed slush box, or in a T56 six-speed manual. Unfortunately, we don't have that one today, but you still gotta love this car. And this particular one does have a couple of nice upgrades. This actually has pacemaker headers up front. So the noise, it sounds good. Have a listen to this thing. We've also got a cold air intake up front. So besides that, I'm actually not sure if there are any other mods or a tune on this, but it does feel pretty stockish, but a little bit louder. Now this particular one is in phantom black and man, it looks good. I gotta say, you know, I'm almost on the fence though between this Z series and the V2s because the V2s, which were like from the VY series, Oh, I'm really on the fence. I'm almost liking those ones more. But then you got this one that's got the vents on the bonnet, you know, the snout up front, which is a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, these two cars, man, they really do look hot, both of them. Now, funny enough, you could actually get one of these in America as the Pontiac GTO or in the UK for our Pommy mates as the Vauxhall Monaro. And of course, this was a Monaro, you know, Holden came out with these. I have previously reviewed a very high horsepower Monaro, which was the six speed manual, and it was supercharged, by the way. Yeah, it was good. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. And this is the top performance variant. So, you know, the Monaros, they did get a 5.7 liter V8. This has got the baddie, the six liter. quite funny and I think this is the reason why 
Holden slash HSV decided to internationally sell this model. People in North America, probably in the UK as well, they like their coupes. Like, it's just a mentality thing. When I was growing up in Canada, everyone wanted a coupe. If you had four doors, that was like grandma spec. But over in Australia, mate, four doors, more whores. You know what I'm talking about. Now the Z series was from 2004 up until 2006, so it was only two short years that we did get this car. And you know, it is a little bit of a shame that, and I always say that with the VZ Club Sport as well, because they only had that one for two years, the same. And those are just literally some of the best, they are the best Holdens at least ever made. And pretty much every car from the Z series is just so beautiful. It really is. You know, look, yeah, inside here, it is pretty damn basic. There's not much to really go on about in here. You know, you got a couple of gauges up top here for your battery and oil pressure and that. But yeah, it's bland. The one thing though that I kind of notice in here over FPVs of this era, because I do have an F6 Typhoon, a BF, and this does feel a little bit more solid. I gotta say, you know, they really do have nice seats here. They're kind of these bucket leather seats that are really comfortable, very like cushiony on the side. They do support you a little bit, but it is for a bigger build. It just has a little bit more weight. Everything you touch, you know, like even the handbrake and just the door, it just, everything feels a little bit more heavier. So it does kind of give it a little bit more of a premium feel in here, even though I really wouldn't call this premium. And just putting the old slush box in first gear here, we'll run it ourselves. <laughs> Oh, wait, yep. We uh, definitely could have a brake upgrade, I think, but <laughs> it's a big coop, man. And uh, you get a little bit scary when you're coming up to these corners at that speed. But that noise. Just listen to it, man. What a rig. Yeah. It's a shame we don't have a T56 in this one. Now, price. These GTOs were pretty damn expensive when they came out, as you could imagine. It's about $79,000 starting. And yeah, that is a lot of change for 2005, especially. But these things really have, at least here in Australia, held their value really, really well. Because right now, if you want to go and buy a GTO that's, you know, even a 100,000 kilometer one that's in decent condition-ish, you're looking around that eighty to ninety thousand dollars, and if you want to get a low K example with a manual in really good condition, mate, the sky is the limit. It goes from like a hundred and ten thousand to like some people are asking two hundred thousand plus, which that is pretty damn crazy. The funny thing is, though, if you go over to America or the UK, you can pick yourself up a Pontiac or a Vauxhall branded one of these things for like 30 grand. Like, really, it's, it's just, I think because they don't know what they have over there, you know, these things weren't really like, Vauxhall and Pontiac don't have a really good brand image over in the UK and in America. So when somebody hears over there Pontiac or Vauxhall, the price isn't going up. Here in Australia, you hear HSV, you hear Holden, Ford, FPV, the prices are just going through the roof because we know how bloody good these cars are. So if you are a viewer in the UK or in America, I'm going to tell you right now, grab yourself a bargain while you can. You know, driving position, it's pretty nice. It's comfortable again. It's easy to drive this thing. It is just like kind of a big boat. You know, it's not in a bad way. It's definitely not your kind of real tight, nimble JDM car. This thing is, you know, a bigger, heavier muscle car, really is what it is. And it owns it. It absolutely does. And when you know what you're getting into, you know how to muscle these things around, they are a hell of a lot of fun on a B-Road. Now, if you guys are enjoying this content, please remember to make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. And if you guys want to help support it financially, 
consider buying a shirt from my merch shop. I do got a link in the description below. I got some pretty cool Aussie designs in there and it really does help me out massively. And also do have Patreon if you guys want to join up there and you'll get notified early and get early access to reviews. So yeah, thanks for the support everyone. Right, that LS2 up front. 400 horsepower. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, mate, they don't make them like this anymore. It is a crying shame because, man, this thing is good. <laughs> now, one thing about this interior I want to mention again is the cup holders because I know a lot of you guys don't like these ones in the Z series because you guys have been telling me, oh, no, they break and they crack and they smash whatever the garbage i love them and here's why because they don't get in a way of when you're shifting if you did have a t56 in here and they actually hold a can pretty damn well like i've uh, even taller cans they fit pretty well and i actually think they were stolen from sab you guys mentioned so who would have thought there's sab parts in a bloody hsv <laughs> now just pulling up out here on this back road this thing is claimed at 5.1 seconds, which would be really damn impressive. So I think I'm gonna have to run the gears here. There's no launch control or anything. So I'm gonna turn traction control off. We're gonna reset the draggy and here we go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I think I can smell a bit of rubber, maybe. <laughs> That's what this car is built for, man. And uh, my goodness, that is pretty damn quick. And one of the benefits of the old slush box is that, you know, it's got long gears and you stall it up and send it. It's not too bad. Zero to 100 right there was done in 5.4 seconds. And I actually guarantee we could probably have improved that because we did spin a little bit. But you know, look, 5.4 seconds in a car from 2005 that weighs 1.6 ton, rear wheel drive only, that is pretty damn good, especially in a slush box. <laughs> I keep calling this thing a slush box, so to all you four speed owners, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's really what it is. But man, she goes all right. Now I'm gonna finish the video off here today, guys. So a huge thank you to Westside Autos once again. Remember, they do have a couple of these for sale right now. So if you wanna check them out, link is in the description below. And my, these Z Series GTOs are really damn cool. And if you could get one in a T56, it is worth the extra money. I can guarantee you that. But man, regardless of the transmission, these cars are just gems. And to be lucky enough to share it with you guys today, I'm really happy. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here. We'll see you on that next video.